tell you guys enough how much I enjoy a cup of hot tea on a cold winter day. Mm. That's really good. I have to formulate a tincture today with a lot of the herbs that we have already tinctured. And today I'm gonna focus uh, more on respiratory health. I'm watching kind of what's happening, what's going around, all the bugs that people are getting. And I just want to have something ready and already formulated up in the event of I need it. Before we get started on blending up this tincture, I do want to say a special thanks to Audible for sponsoring this video. I've been listening to Audible for years, whether I'm going out and foraging in the woods or I'm working in the bees and of course also the greenhouse and even coming up here and making a good cup of tea and just kind of sitting back and listening to some of the, the many stories that they offer. I just started listening to Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kammerer, and I'm pretty excited because she is a, a botanist, and she also believes in the notion that the plants and the animals are your greatest teachers. And for any new member who might be interested in trialing Audible for free for the first 30 days, all you have to do is visit audible.com slash honeystead or text HONEYSTEAD to 500-500. I'll make sure to put all that information down below, but go explore, go see, see all the books that they offer. And if you're anything like me, you might not exactly have enough time to sit down and read a good book. So Audible has been a perfect way for me to still become inspired and lose myself in a good story, which is what I find that is happening right now with Braiding Sweetgrass. And I've already picked out the next book that I'd like to listen to. I'm choosing Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrick. He writes about how fungi make our worlds, change our minds, and shape our future. And after scrolling through and looking at some of the other books, my list is continuing to get a little bit longer each day. <laughs> this tincture into a two ounce dropper bottle. Now a two ounce bottle is equivalent to 60 milliliters. That's the, the overall number that I'm trying to go for. I pulled out seven different tinctures that I would like to, to try to formulate up a protocol. I could go 10 all around except for two and do five milliliters and five milliliters to make 10. I look at tinctures and their actions kind of the same way when I'm formulating up a tea blend. I'm picking the main herbs that I would like to focus on for this protocol. Now I could do a larger bottle, but I think a two ounce bottle is just gonna be fine because this is gonna fit in your pocket, it's gonna fit in your purse. It's a good way to have it for on the go. Now I am going to start with Propolis. Propolis is probably one of my favorite things that I have here in our apothecary. It comes from the bees. The bees will go out and they'll forage and they'll gather all the resins um, and bring it back. And they use the propolis to help coat their entire colony. Um, they line their colony and this is what helps keep them safe. It keeps them healthy. It's considered an antimicrobial. It's an antiviral, antifungal. You can use it internally. You can use it externally. It's also an anti-inflammatory. So because of the properties in propolis, I want to protect and support our, our oral cavity, our opening. It's just another barrier um, to help support and protect our bodies. Propolis is also considered voluntary, which is a fancy term, meaning that it is going to help promote uh, tissue healing. If you've ever taken propolis orally or you've added it into a tea, you will feel a, a coating, a film. It's definitely like a liquid band-aid. So we're gonna go ahead and add 10 milliliters of propolis. Don't forget to shake your bottles before you pour.
Always do your own research on any plant matter that I'm discussing and sharing with you guys on how to make. You might not be able to take this. It could be a contraindication if you have any special allergies or if you're on any medication or if you're pregnant or breastfeeding. So always, always, always do your own research, educate yourself. Plus by doing your own research, it's only gonna make you a better herbalist. Now the next plant that I am going to focus on I think it's gonna to have to be elderberry. You know, if we are fighting something, we wanna help boost our immune system. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and just add 10 of elderberry as well. Elderberry is great if you are fighting uh, the common cold or the flu, but it also will help with fevers as well as if you have a lot of, of sinus um, congestion, which could contribute as well to your cough. So we're gonna go ahead and do 10 milliliters of elderberry as well. Yeah, a little more than 10, but it'll be okay. The next tincture that we're gonna add is elecampane. Now, elecampane is also known for, for helping bring up whatever that might have settled in your lungs, as well as it also has properties in it that will help fight um, any type of bacteria. So, I'm gonna add it in here, and I'll go ahead and just plan on adding 10 milliliters as well. Yep, 10, we're gonna do 10. Why not? Okay, so we have added 30 milliliters, so I'm halfway there. Now, a mullein is an expectorant, so it is intended for that real deep deep cough, um, inflammation, all of that. It has been known to help with individuals that are experiencing uh, bronchitis as well. Um, so we are going to go ahead. I am going to add 10 of mullein. It's so dark. Now lungwort is another respiratory aid that I'm gonna add about five milliliters into this. I would do full 10, however, I wanna save some room for anise seed and some fenugreek, mainly because I think they taste really good and it adds a little bit more, um, just a sweetness to it. But lungwort is also known for, for aiding in individuals that might be battling bronchitis, and <laughs> I might have poured a little bit more. Um, okay, eight. So I'm doing about eight of lungwort. Uh, but it is also an expectorant. It's a voluntary and a demulcent as well as uh, having astringent uh, properties. So I think that is gonna be a nice little addition so far. Okay, that's about the space that we have left. I'm changing my mind with the anise seed only because I've actually already added that into um, a decoction form that we did the other day, but I think I'm going to add Oh no <laughs> I think I'm going to add a little bit of lobelia into into this. I'll tell you why I went ahead and took the anise seed out. I already added anise into a formulation with licorice root and marshmallow root and the anise seed to do a decoction to add to a tea. Instead of adding it into this as well because this tincture is going to be taken uh, during the same time that the tea is going to be drank, I figured let's go ahead and pull that out. I would rather offer another herb that might have more of a complementary factor into uh, this protocol. So Lobelia made the cut, mainly because I know that Lobelia offers relief, especially if somebody is experiencing a, a wheezing cough. I'm gonna go ahead and add 
10 milliliters of lobelia. Doesn't smell too bad. I'm kind of keeping my ratios very simple. I, I know that I can go crazy and do 20 and five and all of that, but I just think it's just easier to do 10 for the main ones that I know I want to focus on and then five for the ones that I'm like, yeah, I'll add that in there. It's going to offer relief and that's kind of what we're going after. But we also want to protect. We also want to, to uh, mend the tissues as well as bring all the funk up, help with fever. So the last one that we're going to add is fenugreek. Now I really like I love the smell of fenugreek. It's sweet. It smells like syrup, um, but it has medicinal properties as well. And I figured this was going to actually be perfect to add to this because fenugreek actually helps reduce the mucus. So I'm going to add, it's probably going to be a little more than five because I have a very heavy hand. Um, but I think I'm going to pretty much make this. Yeah. It's, we're topped off. And that is what I, that is what I wanted. So when you're formulating your tinctures, always know the size bottle that you're gonna use because that's how you're going to kind of set your ratio. I always pick the herb, the plant matter that I wanna focus on most, and then I, I go down from there. And sometimes I second guess myself and sometimes I, I decide to change my mind, pull something out, add something in. That's what's fun about herbal medicine. There's a lot of herbs that will actually offer similar properties, but what I'm looking for is the, the synergy, the approach. I want to complement the herbs. For the dose of this tincture, I would do one dropper full, um, and I'll show you guys kind of what that looks like. This is a, a dropper full, and that you can take up to three times a day. Now this is an alcohol-based tincture, so if there is alcohol in it. The best way to take a tincture, I feel like, is if you have a tea that you're brewing up when it's really nice and hot, I just add my dropper right into the, the hot tea, mainly because the, the alcohol that's in this tincture will actually evaporate. The other forms of tincture making that you can do is you can do the same herb into apple cider vinegar. That doesn't last as long, but it's still, it's still a good way to be able to extract and preserve the medicinal properties of the plants. Or you can use glycerin to make a tincture as well, um, and that doesn't have any alcohol in it, but it's definitely a little bit sweeter. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is label this and make sure that I name it something that is uplifting and positive, and hopefully it's gonna help offer relief and support during these, this time of year when all the funk and the junk is going around. That might be, that might be the name of this. No funk and no junk. <laughs> That's kind of uplifting, I think. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and as always, don't be afraid to get your hands dirty and learn something old. Bye guys.